القيادة السورية على أرواح مواطنينا وأمن بلدنا. Assad does not have significant military capability. إذا أكلونا مع Good afternoon on this Monday, September 23rd. I'm Yumna Naufal and these are today's headlines. President Michel Slayman is in New York to take part in the United Nations General Assembly meeting and he is expected to address the UN General Assembly. Hundreds of policemen fan out across Beirut's southern suburbs in a move welcomed by Hezbollah, pushing back against accusations of self-security leveled against the party by detractors. Gunfire and explosions sound from the Nairobi Mall where Somalia's Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab group threatened to kill hostages on the third day of a raid in which at least 69 have died. President Michel Slayman is in New York to take part in the United Nations General Assembly meeting. He and his wife arrived at 5 p.m. New York time on Sunday. Accompanying the president was a delegation including caretaker Foreign Minister Adnan Mansour, caretaker Social Affairs Minister Wael Abu Faoud, caretaker Deputy Prime Minister Samir Makbil, in addition to administrators and other security officials. The president, who will address the UN General Assembly in a speech, is slated to hold talks with U.S. President Barack Obama at the sidelines of the conference. Also, a special UN meeting on Tuesday will discuss the challenges Lebanon is facing in coping with huge numbers of Syrian refugees who have taken residence in the country. Hundreds of policemen will fan out across Beirut's southern suburbs in a move welcomed by Hezbollah, pushing back against accusations of self-security leveled against the party by detractors. About 800 security personnel will gather at the ISF headquarters in Uzeri at 5 p.m., in about half an hour, spreading out in Dahye, Hezbollah liberated southern Lebanon and has never imposed self-security measures. Sheikh Nabil Kawouk, a high-ranking official in the party, told a crowd in the southern town of Ain Kana on Sunday. Hezbollah repeatedly has said it is not a substitute for the state or the security service. He said that preserving security throughout the country is the responsibility and the duty of the state and the security of Dahi and its inhabitants cannot be neglected. Since the first explosion in Bir al-Abid, Hezbollah has been calling on the state to fulfill its responsibility by enforcing security and protecting residents, referring to the car bomb that exploded in a parking lot on July 9th, wounding 50 people. In other local news, the parliamentary session which Speaker Nabih Bidi has called for is postponed for a fifth time over lack of quorum. The new session will be held on October 23rd. Development and Liberation Bloc MP Ali Bazi lashed out at MP Ahmed Fatfat in comments to reporters after the postponement of the session, saying that accusations that Bidi is insisting on a wide agenda are not of his duties. Fatfat said earlier that the future parliamentary bloc is boycotting the session over its agenda. But the future MP's press office snapped back at Bazi, saying, quote, We're not surprised by the low political rhetoric of MP Ali Bazi, who once again preferred to use his insults for failing to have argumentative thoughts. While change and reform parliamentary bloc sources also pointed out that its MPs will boycott the session over an article concerning the extension of the mandate of security leaders. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is accusing foreign nations of giving orders to terrorists battling his government's forces in an interview with China's state CCTV. He spoke as UN Security Council members negotiate a resolution on how to respond if Syria fails to fulfill an international deal to eliminate its chemical weapons arsenal. Assad told CCTV that Damascus would carry out its commitments, but warned that militants obeying outside powers might try to make it seem otherwise. The Hague-based Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, which is overseeing the process, said on Saturday it had received a complete inventory from Syria and is scrutinizing the data. Assad was further coded as accusing the U.S., Britain and France of trying to make themselves winners in a war against Syria, which is their imaginary enemy. But he expressed confidence that fellow veto-holding Security Council members China and Russia would block Western efforts to authorize the use of force against his country. Extremists from Syria are slipping into Turkey despite heightened security precautions, according to Turkish President Abdullah Gul. Gul told Turkish press from New York, where he is attending the UN General Assembly, quote, 
We are not managing to prevent terrorist infiltration despite all precautions taken and the deployment of cannons and tanks along the Turkish-Syrian border. Turkey, which shares a 900-kilometer border with Syria, is currently sheltering more than 500,000 Syrians who have fled the fighting in their country. Last week, Turkey temporarily shut part of its border after fighting between Syrian rebels and Al-Qaeda front group in the northern town of Azaz. Syria's Foreign Minister Walid Ma'allim is to head to the country's delegation to the UN, the annual UN General Assembly. Ma'allim is expected to address the United Nations on September 30th. On Sunday, the Syrian Opposition National Coalition said a delegation headed by Group President Ahmad Jabra had arrived in New York ahead of an annual meeting. The assembly opens after the U.S. and Russia hammered out a deal under which Syria will turn over its chemical weapons for destruction. And on Saturday, Damascus handed over the remaining details of all its chemical arsenal to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, which is overseeing the deal. The Syrian government says it will so far cost 250 million U.S. dollars for reconstruction in the war-torn country. This is according to the pro-regime daily Al-Watan, which quoted the Prime Minister Wa'il Hal'i. The minister also called for an increased budget allocation for agriculture and said food, energy and drug security are a priority. Coming up next, Wisconsin student Eric Dahl pays his way through university by winning eating contests. More on that when we come back. Welcome back. Heavy gunfire and loud explosions have erupted at Nairobi's Westgate shopping mall as Kenyan troops are still fighting Al-Qaeda-linked gunmen who were holding hostages after killing at least 69 people. The Red Cross says at least 63 people are recorded missing, including hostages as well as those possibly killed or still hiding in the 48-hour-long now siege. As the standoff enters its third day, sustained bursts of rapid gunfire broke out at dawn and soldiers posted around the complex ducked for cover. Sources say this is followed by explosions and more sporadic weapons fire. The Kenyan army says it has secured most of the upmarket, part Israeli-owned complex. A security official says a final assault is underway against the Somali Shabab rebels, believed to be pinned down in a part of the mall but using hostages as human shields. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has given the go-ahead for Jewish settlers to reoccupy a contested West Bank building. Today's order comes in response to the death of an Israeli soldier near the biblical city of Hebron. Netanyahu has ordered immediate action for settlers to go into the house, which they briefly occupied last year. The settlers claim they purchased the house from a Palestinian. The military evicted them because they hadn't received authorization to live there. Netanyahu's office refused to elaborate further how the order will be implemented. But military spokesman Guy Inbar says the army is still investigating the settler's claim of purchase and Israel's military says it's still searching for the gunman behind Sunday's killing of the soldier in Hebron. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has met with UAE Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Zayed at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. The meeting comes just before the United Nations General Assembly opens and a couple of weeks after Kerry said the UAE-backed military action in Syria. The United States is pushing for the UN Security Council to adopt a binding resolution on Syria's chemical weapons, saying it is essential that a Russia-US deal on eradicating Syria's chemical weapons arsenal be enforced and that the UN Security Council act. An Egyptian court has banned the Muslim Brotherhood from carrying out any activities in the country, widening a campaign to debilitate the Islamist movement of deposed President Mohamed Morsi. The court's ruling comes amid a crackdown on the Brotherhood and more than a month after hundreds of Islamist protesters died in a police operation to disperse their Cairo sit-ins, sparking a wave of nationwide violence. On another note, Egypt is likely to completely rewrite the constitution adopted under Mohamed Morsi in a further push to reverse changes introduced under the deposed president. This is according to a spokesman for the committee amending it. The constitution, drafted by an Islamist-dominated assembly and approved in a referendum in December of last year, was seen by Mursi's opponents as failing to guarantee human and women's rights and to reflect Egypt's diverse population. A University of Wisconsin student uh, with a nickname of Silo is eating his way through school uh, competitively. Computer engineering student Eric Dahl now ranks third in the world of competitive eating as determined by all pro eating rankings, though he once held the top spot. 
Dahl has earned more than $18,000 in prize money or merchandise to help pay for his education. I'm eating for my tuition, he said. Dahl was drawn to competitive eating in 2011 at the former Big Red Steakhouse in Madison. He didn't want to pay for his meal, so he signed up for a challenge, ate a three-pound cheesesteak sandwich in less than 10 minutes, and skipped the bill. He finished in 5 minutes and 50 seconds. The 6'3 Dahl said he walks a few miles a day, lifts weights twice a week, and plays intramural soccer and hockey to maintain his 220-pound weight. Breaking Bad, the brutal drug-fueled saga of an everyman's ambition turned evil, captured its first Best Drama Emmy Award, denying the online series House of Cards a history-making honor. I did not see this coming, said Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan. Attention and acclaim for MSC Cable's channels Breaking Bad has built as it nears the end of its five-season run next Sunday with the final eight-episode arc eligible for the next well, this, year's uh, Emmy. Modern Family won its fourth consecutive trophy for top comedy series, even though its oft-honored cast was shut out this time. Jeff Daniels won the Emmy for Best Drama Series Actor for his portrayal of an idealistic TV anchorman in the newsroom, with Claire Danes capturing top actress honors for her troubled CIA agent in Homeland. The ceremony often struck a melancholy note with extended tributes to stars and other industry members who died in the past year. This year, Breaking Bad received 13 Emmy nominations. The more adult-oriented fall movie-going season has got off to a strong start over the weekend as the Hugh Jackman kidnapping drama Prisoners opened with a box office leading $21.4 million, according to studio estimates. The Warner Bros. thriller, which also stars Jake Gyllenhaal, is among the first fall films with Oscar aspirations to open in theaters. It's also playing in Beirut, and it was a strong debut for a serious R-rated drama that cost about $46 million to make. Directed by Denis Villeneuve, the nearly two and a half hour long Prisoners is about the working class families of two young girls who are abducted. In a story heavy with allegory, Jackman plays a father willing to cross more alliance for justice, and Gyllenhaal stars as the small town police detective trying to navigate the case. Happy Hello. Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Hello. Happy Thanksgiving. Anna, <laughs> wait until we're invited. Oh, for God's sake, Kelly, get the hell in here. <laughs> what? He actually sings in the shower, so. Oh, I do not. <laughs> yes, you do. Abby, can I take Joy to our house? Wear a hat, please. You're just getting over a cold. Joy, you wear a hat, too. Where are your sisters? I can't find them. Anna? Joy? Wait, I checked the entire house. They're not here. Dad, there was this RV and they were playing on it. There was, there, we thought there was someone inside. You wait here. I'm coming up. I couldn't find them! Detective Loki. <laughs> Do you have children, Detective? I'm going to find your daughter. Show me your hands right now! Huh? You put those girls somewhere, Alex. No. I know you put those girls somewhere. He stays in custody until my daughter's found, right? We have a 48 hour hold on. It ends tomorrow unless we bring charges. We'll charge him with something. That boy has never been in trouble, not a day in his life. Well, this thing's clean. I'd start looking in the woods by the rest stop. The police said they're letting him go today. What you doing? Tell me! No, 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 no! Day six, and every day she's wondering why I'm not there. You told us that you could protect us from everything. Why did you look for my daughter? Alex. What in the world did you do? Someone has to make him talk, or they're gonna die. We're not gonna help Keller, but we won't stop him either. Let him do what he needs to. I know you know where they are. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. President Michel Sleiman is in New York to take part in the United Nations General Assembly meeting and he is expected to address it with a speech. Hundreds of policemen fan out across Beirut's southern suburbs in a move welcomed by Hezbollah pushing back against accusations of self-security levels against the party. 
And gunfire and explosions sound from the Nairobi Mall where Somalia's Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab group threatened to kill hostages on the third day of a raid in which at least 69 people have died. Those are your Monday headlines live on Future Television in Beirut. I'm Yumna Nofal, wishing you a good week ahead. Assad does not have significant military capability.